Hey guys, uh, chapter 23, Gauss Law. In this uh, session, we'll be doing question number four, question number, not problem number four, it's question number four. You will not find them in uh, the Indian edition, but international edition, they are there. You can find them in the previous editions, Indian editions, but not in this 10th Indian edition. Okay, uh, so let me read out the question. We we'll again have a diagram here. Figure shows in cross section two Gaussian uh, spheres and two Gaussian cubes. They are centered on a positively charged particle. Part A. Rank, uh, rank, the, rank the net flux through the four Gaussian surfaces greatest first. Let's go for this one first. Part A. We have to rank them according to the flux through them. According to flux, electric flux through them. Now remember, electric flux is the number of field lines crossing through a surface normally. And from Gauss law, we know that flux is inversely proportional, is directly proportional to charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface. Okay, charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface. So we have three, four uh, Gaussian surfaces here. This one will represent that by A. This one that is represented by B. This one here, this one here. Uh, this is represented by C and then this cube here which is represented by D. So we have two spherical uh, Gaussian surfaces A and C then two cubical Gaussian surfaces B and D. All of them are enclosing the same charge plus Q. So if all of them are having the same charge inside them then all of them will have the same flux through them. Okay. So all of them will have same flux through them. We can also talk about it this way. Uh, if we consider it diagrammatically, if we have a positive charge here and we have some uh, surface here, then we have some another crazy looking surface here, Gauss surfaces. If we draw the field lines, field lines are going to be this way. Every field line that is crossing the smaller Gaussian surface is also crossing the bigger one. So flux through them is same, okay, flux through them is same or quantitatively we can see charge enclosed is same, so flux is same. So flux through all the four Gaussian surfaces is going to be same. So part A, all of them tie. Okay. Part A, all tie. Now let's move to part B. Rank the magnitudes of the electric fields on the surfaces greatest first and indicate whether the magnitudes are uniform or variable along each surface. So what we have to do is we have to consider these four Gaussian surfaces again. Then we have to rank them according to the magnitude of electric field on them. Okay. At any point on the Gaussian surface. Now from this chapter uh, after studying Gauss law you must know that field uh, due to a point charge is equal to gamma q divided by r square. Gamma is the electrostatic constant, 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0. Or field is inversely proportional to r square. Q, 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 this q is same for all of them. Whether you consider this, uh, this Gaussian surface or this one or this one or this one, q is same. So for this situation, uh, electric field is inversely proportional to r. Electric field is inversely proportional to r. Now let's consider the Gaussian surfaces, points on the Gaussian surfaces. Gaussian surface A, which is a sphere. You consider any point on this Gaussian surface, any point on this Gaussian surface, it's at least distance compared to other uh, Gaussian surface, compared to any other point on any other Gaussian surface. If you consider this point on this Gaussian surface, these points are at smaller distance. If you consider this point at this Gaussian surface, these points are at smaller distances. So any point on the Gaussian surface A, are at smaller distances from the point charge compared to the other ones. That means field at any point on A will be greatest compared to other uh, point, uh, points on other Gaussian surfaces. So A is going to uh, have the maximum electric field. Magnitude of the field will be maximum. So A is going to be maximum. So part B, A is going to be maximum. Then if we consider the next uh, Gaussian surface, this cubical one, this B, this B. Now consider any point on the Gaussian surface. I'll consider two extreme points, this one and this one. This one is at the least distance from the charge. This one is at the greatest distance from the charge. 
But if you consider these points with any other points on any other Gaussian surface, these points are at greater distances compared to points on A, but are at smaller distances compared to C and D. Any point on C is at larger distance than these two points. Any point on D is at larger distance than these two points. Any point on A is at smaller distance. Than. So these points are lying at greater distances than A, but smaller distances uh, compared to B, and C and D. So its electric field will be less than A, but greater than that of C and D. So after A, A is having the greatest, then we'll have B. So B will have uh, smaller than A, but larger than uh, C and D. Now consider C. Consider any point on C, any point on C. The distances are larger compared to A and B, but smaller compared to D. If distances are larger compared to A and B, then field will be less than A and B. If distances are smaller than D, then field will be greater than D. So field at any point on C, Gaussian surface C, will be smaller compared to A and B, but will be greater compared to D. So A is having the greatest one, then B is having uh, the greatest. After B, A, then C will have the greatest. And then obviously D. So field at any point on A is greatest then feel at any point on B, then feel at any point on C, then feel at any point on D. Then there is uh, one more bit in the question. Uh, it also tells you to see if the field at all these points are variable or uh, for a given surface variable. Let me read out the exact uh, thing and indicate whether the magnitudes are uniform or variable along each surface, along each surface magnitude. Okay. Any point on A, if you consider A now, all the points are equidistant from uh, Q. So field along A will be uniform. Magnitude of field along A will be uniform. That is not the case with B. Different points on B are at different distances. This is at the smaller distance, uh, uh, lesser distance and this is at the larger distance. So field will not be same. Field magnitude will not be same uh, along this surface B then uh, uh, along the surface B. Then C, C is again spherical. So every point is at the same distance from uh, the charge Q. So field at every point will be same in magnitude. And then D again, different points are at different distances. This point here is at the smaller distance and this point here is at the larger distance. So field is not going to be same uh, along surface D. So for uh, surface A and C, field magnitudes are going to be uh, uniform. For A, separately uniform. For C, separately uniform. But that uh, field along B and D are going to be variables. Okay, fine. 